Seventh grade, a few days ago, we began talking about biomes. And we defined biomes as large communities of plants and animals that occupy a distinct region of the world. We also mentioned that they can be made up of many ecosystems that are a part of that region of the world. And that these biomes can either be terrestrial or aquatic. We've spent the last couple of days taking really brief looks at several different types of biomes in our world. And so today we're actually going to take a look at, uh, well, an, another aspect of biomes. We're going to kind of shrink our view a little bit or zoom in on a very unique and very tiny type of ecosystem that is found in all biomes. And that is called a microhabitat. So a microhabitat is a very small part of the environment that uh, supports a distinct flora, in other words, plants, and fauna, in other words, animals. Some organisms, usually very small ones, may live well and actually thrive in one microhabitat, but just a couple of centimeters away in another microhabitat, they may not be able to survive. There are a lot of different examples that we could give of what a microhabitat is. Um, you could have a microhabitat under uh, a shady area of a tree or underneath a rock in a stream. You could have a microhabitat on the underside of a rotting log. Or you could have a microhabitat on the top of a leaf or even on the bottom of the leaf. There may be organisms that can survive on the top, but not the bottom, or maybe vice versa. So in just a few minutes, you're going to read a short article about microhabitats and answer four questions about that article. The questions are found on the back of the article. When you finish silently reading and answering those questions, please go ahead and put your number, your name, and your date on the paper and put that in the inbox. After that, you are going to go ahead and continue working on the foldable that uh, we have worked on the last few days, first filling in information. Then yesterday we started working on cutting out and gluing and some people got around to folding. Um, but you're going to continue working on that foldable, getting it attached to a piece of lined paper. Um, the sample will be available for you to look at if you are not quite sure how to put it on the piece of lined paper or if uh, you need to see how to fold it. Keep in mind when you put it on the lined paper, try not to glue it over the holes. That way you can put it very easily into the current unit section of your binder. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a really great day and I will see you tomorrow.